Welcome to KBYP's Ham Shack. Looks like Fibber McGee's radio closet exploded all over the place. We got the absolute best of high-end commercial electronic and radio parts from SKs, N1CWR, and WB4CTW. And the majority of them are amplifier parts. We got uh, four pole. Uh, four PDT switches down in here from a control panel from a local nuclear plant. Those are uh, aerospace rated switches. These are $180 new without the cover. Ultra expensive stuff. Just got boxes full of <clears throat> Hubble electrical outlets. Gold plated binding post more common switches, Motorola rectifiers, iDeck relays, just piles upon piles of ultra high-end stuff, uh, dummy load resistors, uh, those carbon comps are like three bucks a piece now, big Herkin transformer, oil fields, probably 30 3 400, 4 400, 3 500s. A couple of them are new. I don't know, 8 or 10 or 12 4 1000s in boxes here. It's Meter City. I got all kinds of meters. Got some spare bird watt meter elements. That box is full of uh, smaller transmit tubes and vacuum variables. This box is full of some more oddball tubes, uh, high voltage rectifiers. Oh my goodness. I don't know what all kinds of tubes up in here. Those are small receiving tubes and some industrial numbers in those pizza boxes. Component City. There's a box of 4 400 broadcast poles. Tubes. New Drake TR3 and TR4 panel meters. What's that? Metal tubes. Transmit tubes, transmit tubes. Great big honking 1 ohm potentiometer. Got a 30 kV Jennings vacuum variable capacitor test unit. That uh, generates, I guess, upwards of 30 kV to test the vacuum variables. No, oh, what else? Transformers, antenna rotors. Got them, we got lots of crap. Thousands of bucks of NOS parts. Old tube socket savers. Great big Herkin ceramic switch. Extremely fancy. I guess plastic bushings. Foil form. Some big. Two, three, four, five, six section switch. Panel nuts. Old military crystals. Glass connectors. Glass connectors. GE SCR triad. More glass connectors. A bag of quarter inch. These long arm phone jacks. 12 volt buzzers, higher voltage fuse holders, inductors, inductors, funky wound RF chokes, solenoid coil, piles upon piles of carbon resistors. You got a bag of high precision 100k ohm meter divider resistors, you got 10 ohm 2 watt carbon comps, bags of them. Bags on bags of stuff. Funky, very expensive, fancy wound coil assembly. Another funky coil assembly. <clears throat> Plate coil. Dip silver micas by the bags. Uh, 0.05 at 500 disc ceramics. Tantalums, 
more gumdrops, more gumdrops, more gumdrops. Point triple oh one microfarad at twenty five hundred volts. Doorknobs, piles of piles of piles of doorknobs. There's probably three thousand bucks worth of doorknobs in here. The best there is, and it's all new, new old stock. What other kind of crap we got? We got a uh, transmit coil from an Arc Five, <clears throat> and I have an Arc Five for sale. I'll do a video. Well, I'll follow this video up with the rigs. That's it. Air variable, air variable, switch, filament choke assembly. And down in here is a bunch of dowel keys and similar. And some of them are new. Dowel keys, dowel keys. Go we'll price a new dowel key. That's four, four to five hundred bucks a year for that. <clears throat> different BNC switching relay more crap than a Christmas turkey folks there's a motorized ceramic switch yeah good luck trying to find one of those some kind of funky extremely heavily shielded and connector deal splitter I don't know Four pounds worth of stainless. The Glenn Martin two and a half inch tower bearing. Heath kit. Um, what's the number on it? HO, HO10. That has never been finally assembled, never been used. Got a brand new CRT in it. Kenwood PS430 power supply. Drake 3300 low pass filter. Heath kit solid state dip meter rebuilt. more stuff on top of stuff coax switch custom made 200 watt dummy load mfj low pass filter mfj swr analyzer what's that six meter tuner of course we know on this channel no such thing as a tuner is there Sit down if you go try to price that three direction ceramic switch. You're gonna pay 500 bucks for that if you can find it. <clears throat> Good night. What else we got? Radio Shack meter, rotary switch, Mallory. Don't know what that is. Cables from Cable City. A couple hundred bucks worth of it, probably SMA connectors. Passive chassis punches, 6146 tubes used and new. Got a whole bunch of smaller these uh, air padding capacitors, brand new Hammerlin APC 25s. Those are probably 60 bucks new. I think I've got 10 of them. These little jewels. Them things ain't cheap anymore. I don't know what else in this. More of those padding capacitors. Components. You want to build stuff. I got stuff to build stuff with. Construction boxes. <laughs> little various. Bud type boxes I guess. Five micron lapping tape if you want to lap ultra finely polished relay contacts and switch contacts. BNK color bar generator from the NTSC days. There hides a repaired working Heath kit tube tester. Good night. Warm coil, big coil. It's of about a hundred gold plated. PC board mount, BNC connectors, new panel meters, out here in Radio Land, got a crap pile of 
the old HP or the old uh, Tektronics uh, RM35 oscilloscope plug-in modules. I got MS4 power supply ca cabinets for the Drake. I've got two four and a half gigahertz analog spectrum analyzers, which I'm going to rebuild. Those are very rare. And we got here, got Drake R4A completely restored and aligned like new. R4B that's not restored. Drake MN2000 restored. There's a TR4C that I've almost finished doing more or less what I did to the TR3 with it. And the restored remote BFO3. And the Radio Shack DX302 receiver. And Kenwood 530 with the PA filaments out. And another Drake TR4 with power supply. And an ARC-5 that's been put on 40 meters with two power supply things and some kind of filter can thing. And National NCX-3. Central Electronics rare item. MM2 multi-phase RF analyzer. Completely restored. And mostly aligned Hewlett Packard 651 AFRF generator. MFJ DSP filter completely recapped. The mighty multi LMAC transider model AF67 needs restored. And the homebrew two tube CW transmitter with digital display that I'm working on. Got the power supply lead in, got the bracket for the tubes. Just too much other stuff to fart with. And one of these data scope, seven wide oscilloscope deals. Military stuff. And remote VFO and two and six meter transmitters for the 530. And a pair of Kenwood twins with the matching speaker. I got the boxes for these and for the 530. And a merch. Ultimate Transmatch needs the inductor taken apart and rebuilt. They screwed it up originally. <laughs> Heath kit. Power supply that goes along with the HW8. HW8 is recapped. But um, if it's anything you can't live without, let me know. Got two Autech filters. So, stuff for sale. If you need it, if you want it, here it is. Even got a, uh, what's hiding in here? Big honking bird laboratory 50 ohm 500 watt dummy load. Sending into the abyss of the garage WB4 CTW's custom built monster amp. That's a 230 Variac compartment down there for 230 in. And the output to a 10 kV amp and a half transformer and meter bank. Apparently, this was built by WA4GKN because that's his call sign on the meters. There's the amplifier bay, a single 4 1000 with all high voltage parts. And it was operated up to 6 kV on the plate. And then over here. We have someplace hiding down here. The transformer, nobody would want to try to lift. And there's the power transformer for it. 150 pounds if it's an ounce. Uh, 5,500 volts each, each side. General radio. And the cabinet it was in was big honking oil fields. This is the power supply that was with it. And the 50 megahertz killer, 4 1000 down inside. Nicely done with filament voltage control and cathode tuning, plate and cathode tuning. So tunable all the way around. And then the 160 mono bander with the plate voltage indicating up to 7 kV. There's a tick mark there about a little bit over 7 kV. 
So cathode tune, filament voltage, filament monitoring, plate load, big high voltage spacing capacitors. These amps are built with the best high voltage parts available. That's some kind of generic two or three kV power supply here with a, a zero rate two or some kind of regular tube inside. And there's a what's this? We have not one but two RM35A scopes. This one's got a white tube, and uh, it comes on, puts a great big fuzzy spot and no sweep on the screen so it's lost focus but there's there's one there that came from Ralph's and the other one a lot cleaner RM35A came from Doug but uh, good night there's hundreds of bucks worth of knobs right there but that's where the the pile of plugins upstairs go to and some of the plugins are military down to five millivolt input and meters 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 Come to Meter City. So, other than that, I don't have a whole lot in the way of parts or equipment. There's a good stuff. Nobody's getting that. There's some god awful expensive equipment sitting there. But um, there it is. Let me know what you want, what you need. Um, somebody looking for a good restorer. That NCX3 is probably the best. They're called the Baby Drake. Very much, this, the schematic's very much like the TR3. It's 80, 40, 20, and 10, I think. It's partly restored. I've rebuilt a power supply except for adding 12 volt filament. <clears throat> Should have 12 volt DC. Need some resistors replaced. Clean things up. Just basic resto work. And uh, the ARC 5 ought to work. And uh, it's a real simple. Real simple gadget. But um, that NCX3 or the ARC-5 and the Drake R4B would make an interesting pair. Those will bring lots of comments on the air. So, uh, and the rear piece is apparently the central monitor scope. I guess that's a rare item. So, and there are the plugins that go in with the two scopes. So, anyway. See anything you can't live without, let me know. Email me. My email's in the video descriptions or k8byp at Yandex, Yankee Alpha November, Delta Echo X-ray.com. Did it.